What's going on, YouTube? It's some idiot with a wrench. Here with a new mic. It's almost like I'm a professional now. Don't get carried away. I'm not saying I am a professional. I just get to cosplay like one now. And on top of the new hardware, I've got a new assistant. Everybody say hello to Daisy. Daisy, you want to say hello to the internet? Yeah. She's been helping me here in the garage. Actually, that's not true at all. She's the big reason why I haven't put out a whole lot of content lately, but whatever. She's cute. And hopefully, eventually, she will be helpful in the garage. I'm trying to teach her how to grab shit for me out of the toolbox. I'm covering my wrenches in peanut butter. So, the Chevelle. She's done. And by I mean done, I mean done. There's video footage of a first start. She, she, I did it today. You, you guys want to see it? the cam break-in instructions actually let me turn this off and I'll go do the right thing here in a sec damn fuck yeah isn't that fucking cool man I never thought that I would get this thing up and running especially that easy like I don't know I I've never done anything like this before and I set out on this at the same time that the whole cam and lifter fiasco drama thing was waving through the internet right car wizard uncle tony a whole bunch of people talking about how cam and lifters are all shit and you gotta go i don't know man like you want to talk about pucker factor i'm pretty sure if you go back and you watch that footage of me starting the car you can see my jeans getting sucked up into my booty hole right before that thing fires off but it does the thing it's a it runs and it sounds good fucking good haven't messed with timing haven't messed with fueling nothing and she runs i'm impressed with me but i wanted to do a little bit more than that in this video one wanted to talk about the car a little bit because it is my baby and uh, give you guys a bit of an honest look into like what something like this would cost you don't have to do a cool vortex swap on a chevelle like i did obviously GM put this motor in fucking everything for like 50 years. So anything from like a cool Tri-5 all the way up to like you could hot rod like a 70s Malaise Caprice. It's free to rip all that smog shit out of there. So, you know, hopefully this means something to somebody. And this little price breakdown is hopefully the last piece of that puzzle. If you're thinking about doing like a cool swap like this, like I did. Hopefully this helps you. So first, 
let me step over Daisy. Let's talk about my car. This car came to me when I was 16. It was my dad's. He was a real big hot rodder, real big, well, not hot rodder. He just loved cool ass cars, right? And I was like 12 when he brought this thing home. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember I was sitting in the kitchen and I could see it through the window over the sink coming up the driveway on the farm. And I fell in love with it right then, right there. It was truly love at first sight. Uh, and for the next four years, my dad really like taught me how to love cars, how to work on cars, how to do the whole kit and caboodle. Um, this is the first car I ever learned how to change oil in, believe it or not. And when I was 16, almost 17, my dad died. He was... Uh, in a really bad motorcycle wreck and just like that the car came to me and ever since then I've pretty much only tried to keep it stock or stock ish tried to maintain it repair it keep it on the road there have been periods in my life where this not in significant amounts of time either has been my main source of transportation my legitimate daily driver and now that it's running again, as soon as I get this old piece of shit Ford up and going, it's going to be my daily driver again. I'm limited by my cord here. So I'm over the moon that it's up and running. I think dad would really love the way that it turned out. Um, you want to talk about project creep. This right here is the epitome of project creep. Uh, it, what parked it in January, it, it would get up to temp and then die. It would lose timing, lose spark. And all the gurus on Chevelles.com or what, whatever fucking forum I was diving on to try and figure this shit out, they, the posts, nobody actually talked to me. Of course not. It's the internet. But um, from what I was reading, it was the condenser. So the condenser was getting too hot and then failing. So... I pulled the, the distributor and I was looking at getting a new one and I was like, well, I might as well go HEI. And if I'm going to go HEI, you should probably put an intake in it. And if we're putting an intake in it, probably needs headers. And if we're going to do headers, why not a cam? See where I'm going. Then I pulled the valve cover and looked at the, the heads. And they're 882 smogs, smogulators, which if you didn't know, that's the worst fucking head GM ever made. So why am I going to take all this cool go fast shit and duct tape it to a block that's choked out with these shitty fucking heads? <clears throat> that doesn't sound very smart to me. So I ripped them out and I decided that I was going to put new heads in it. So there's the project, right? Basically, everything but the rotating assembly in the block. I was going to come off the engine. We're going to put cool go fast shit in its place. And it's all going to work out and be hunky dory and all that shit. So I think it turned out pretty good. Now, when you embark on a journey like this, and this is a legitimate journey, Odysseus level Odyssey, right? Uh, a lot of people on YouTube will tell you how to do it. And they'll make cool videos showing you how they've done it. Go watch all my shit, please. Uh, but a lot of people aren't going to tell you how much it costs. Because that's the number one biggest barrier to entry. And I'll, a lot of times, even when people talk about how much shit costs, I feel like it's a little bit disingenuous. So I have went through my email for you guys, just for you, and looked at my receipts for everything that I ordered online to pay for this build, which is going to be almost all my parts. And uh, I dug around in a lot of my trash boxes around here, finding receipts for shit that also got thrown in the car. So let's go over that. Let's talk about how much this costs. And then let's wrap this video up because I've shot this like six times now and I'm ready to go drink a beer. So first and foremost, the heads. I... I went with Summit branded Vortec heads uh, because one, buying heads is that whole world is fucking insane, right? You can spend so much money and a lot of the advertising for a lot of these brands like Dart and I don't even know any of the other ones off the top of my head right now are kind of misleading. Like the listing will say 
heads but then it's only one head but it doesn't even come with springs even though the picture says shows it fully dressed with springs and valves but then you read the description or the comments and people are like why the fuck is this a bare head and then you got to get machined and all it's like all kinds of shit right plus buying used heads right a lot of people want to sell these used dart heads you got no idea what kind of mileage it is unless you're a machine a machinist you can't really look at or test them in a meaningful way i've found according to some people on the internet so it's it's that's just the whole fucking clusterfuck jumping into that so i just decided to go with vortex because they are a gm um design right like gm put these on those blocks that are pretty much identical to that block in the 90s so odds are it's going to work out well summit uses the good chinesium so hopefully odds are there that I'm not going to have any quality control issues. And I didn't. Um, some of the runners were a little, uh, you know, could have been better. And I could have cleaned them up. But then I would have to change the name of my YouTube channel. So here we are. They turned out pretty good, I think. And the last thing I wanted was to, like, cheap out. Because, like, you can find cheap Chinesium heads online that are like 600 bucks for a pair fully dressed all aluminum um but they're not drilled for accessories and i'll be fucked if i'm going to do that myself to be honest with you uh and you know they're coming from some cheap like chinese slave labor camp somewhere in the middle of nowhere uh, so who knows how the fuck those are going to work and as somebody who's like never fucked with heads before i really did not want to have to like figure out and troubleshoot whether or not it was my cheap shitty heads or I did it wrong. Like people who know what they're doing have a hard enough time with that, let alone fucking this guy. Right? So no, I went with a relatively name brand option. That was still pretty cheap. They were only 363 bucks a piece. So for a combined cost of $727, the cam kit, I did buy comp, which is again, a name brand. Because I was, like, when I ordered these parts, the whole cam and lifter fiasco was happening. So, I wanted a name brand thing, a company that I knew I could call and get and try and get my money back if it if they exploded and grenaded my engine. Um, it's just a 262 cam. It's nothing special. It's the second biggest they'll sell you that says it works with a stock converter. Because, like, I'm not fucking with pulling the transmission in this thing. Not happening. Absolutely not. So... That's why I went with that one. In the clip of me starting the car, I don't know if you can hear it. I haven't fucked with that audio yet, but it sounds pretty good. It's not insane, but it's good. So that kit came with a double roller timing chain and the lifters I needed, and they all went on pretty easily. Um, that was $298. The head bolts were ARP head bolts. I really didn't want feel like trusting 70 pounds torqued to yield to again cheap off like knockoff chinesium call me crazy those were 89 bucks 90 dollars the head gaskets were 46 bucks i got all my major gaskets from felpro again name brand because i'll be fucked if i'm going to tear that down and go back to the heads again if i don't have to like that that literally sounds like the absolute worst possible outcome for this. So, well, maybe not the absolute worst, but I wasn't going to do it. I was going to try and prevent it as much as possible, I should say. All right. Uh, but the head, ga yeah, head gaskets were $47. The timing chain, um, like the timing case cover, do, do hickey gasket things were $12. Bucks. Um, I didn't put the exhaust or the headers on yet because I'm, not, I'm just simply not set up to do that here. I'm going to need to get the car on a lift and jack the engine up, undo the engine mounts and all that happy shit. And I, I just, I tried, I can't do it in here. So I don't know what I want to do there, but it, they are going to end up on the car at some point. So, but it was $370 for the exhaust and $80 off Facebook marketplace for the headers. Um, gotta love when you show up to buy an auto parts thing in the middle of the suburbs from some dude named Sheldon on Facebook, and he's got four wrecked cars strewn out in the cul-de-sac of his nice private suburban neighborhood. Fills you with a lot of confidence. That man knows what he's doing. Um, 
But yeah, they were 80 bucks. Uh, sorry, I can't read. So I bought a pushrod checker and like a set of calipers to do some measurement stuff. Didn't use them. Didn't feel the need to. Uh, so that was 55 bucks wasted. 65 bucks wasted. It was 30 bucks for the pushrod checker because not only did I not use it, I sprung for the good one. And the calipers, uh, again, $35. Didn't use them. Probably will at some point. Maybe not. Who knows? The oil pan gasket I didn't use was 30 bucks. I did use the bolts that came in that kit. Uh, Felpro, they sell like a one-piece steel core rubber oil pan gasket, and it looks like a really nice gasket, perfect for like an application like this. It's just I can't get the oil pan off the bottom of the car, so I didn't. I thought I could, couldn't. Already bought the part first because I'm a genius, so... It'll sit in a, in a box over there on the shelf for the next 40 years. The cam lube, uh, I bought that for $20. Big jug of it. Used half of it. It's a really pretty red color. Very sticky. They say you can't use too much lube. I asked my girlfriend and she said that was a fact. So, seemed like a worthy purchase. Uh, the self-aligning rocker arms were 151 bucks. So... When you go to Vortec over old school, like Gen 1 heads, you've got to change to self-aligning rocker arms. Uh, all that means is they've got little nubs so to keep the tip of the rocker arm on the valve stem. Um, I wanted to reuse the, stomped, the stock stamped steelies. Say that five times fast. The stock rocker arms with this, again, to save on the money, I used the stock push rods. Uh, you can't because fucking why could you right that would just be too fucking easy um uh, they were like, they're like prw or something like that i don't know they say made in the usa on the box i'm not sure if i believe that uh they're roller tipped which is cool the intake i bought that from a really nice guy named larry off of facebook marketplace uh stood there and talked to him in his driveway for entirely too long uh, the gaskets for the intake and the exhaust was thirty-one fifty and twenty-five dollars respectively. I sprung the two bucks for the like three-piece drop-in exhaust gasket, and holy fuck, does that not make your life so much easier? Like way easier. If you have the option, doesn't even matter what you're working on. Even if you're one of those crazy fucking Mopar guys, if you've got the option to use drop in exhaust gaskets do it and thank me later um the intake bolts uh those were 28 bucks and then turns out throttle cables just you know a three foot cable from a pedal to your carburetor cost 65 dollars in 2023 because fucking why not who knows why it seems like the simplest part on the planet but it's costing me an arm and a leg i don't know why out of everything on this list that's the thing that gets me the most fired up but it is and then i, I put 300 dollars in there for incidentals so like brake clean vacuum line fuel line vacuum plugs shit like that right stuff that like if you're doing a project like this you know you're going to spend it's just hard to quantify all that shit all the dirty sweaty should not have started this project rides to uh, to like the auto parts store that you take that shit right I, I also did not include any of the things for the spark plugs or the oil change because those are like maintenance and everybody knows how much that shit costs so all of that added together it brings this to $2,420 which it's not that bad, right? Just under 2,500 bucks for pretty much an entire top end swap on a Gen 1 350 is not, I mean, that's pretty good, right? I don't, that's not bad. You could spend a whole fuckload more money, a whole fuckload more money. I was just stepping on Daisy's paw. Oh no. Sorry, baby girl. You could spend a whole fuckload more money. Um, 
for a lot less return, I feel like. Once you start really diving into cars like this, you, especially old shit these days, like there is a very steep price creep once you start talking about performance stuff. And the return on dollars spent versus horsepower gained quickly falls off. And hopefully, and again, I'm kind of talking out my ass. I haven't even pulled it out of the driveway yet. Hopefully, I hit the sweet spot with money spent versus horsepower gained. We, when I was on Power Tour in 2022, last year, I put this on that dyno truck thing that was at every event. Um, and 250 foot pounds of torque and 125 horsepower on the motor here in stock form before I ripped into it. So as long as I, I make more than that, which I think I would have a really hard time not, to be honest with you, I'll be happy. Uh, everybody on the internet, all the form gurus, they'll tell you that you're going to make like 350 horsepower, 400 horsepower, Vortec, bleh. Hey, man. I don't know. That, we'll see. I don't know. I don't think so. If if I clear 250, like nudge, like nudge 300s balls uh, horsepower, I'll be more than happy with the setup I've got. Uh, if not, whatever. Like At least it's going to sound a lot cooler. And hopefully run and be reliable again. So that's it. The Chevelle's done. I'm not going to be doing any more videos purely on the Chevelle for a while. Because uh, really there's nothing else left to do with it except drive it. Whenever I do get it up and running, you better believe I'm, I'm going to bring you guys along. And we'll go do burnouts in Walmart parking lot or something, right? Uh, but until then, I've got other content coming. Uh, I'm taking the C10 on Power Tour this year, Little Red. And she is nowhere near ready for that. So I've got a video that I'm going to be shooting tomorrow, hopefully, of me getting this thing ready for Power Tour. I'm doing a front brake conversion, going to discs. I'm hopefully going to figure out whatever the fuck this massive exhaust backfire thing happening is. I bought a whole bunch of gaskets I probably don't need. Uh, that's project number one. And then the Ford uh, is going to come after that because I need to get it running so I can get the Chevelle out and we can go do cool burnouts. And then after those are done, I don't know. It's getting to the point now where I can see like the light at the end of the tunnel for all three of my projects. Well, two now because this one's done. And uh, that's just when the itch starts to creep in you know you're too close to having nothing to work on start scrolling through facebook marketplace filtering on all kinds of dumb shit when you're trying to watch tv with the old lady so we'll see if you guys have got any suggestions uh not like maybe you want to see something cool done with the ford or the c10 or or my next project go ahead and bleep bloop them down below i'm thinking i'm going to pick up a mo motorcycle there's a pretty sweet cb750 a couple miles from me that i might go grab let me know. Anyway, that's about it. I'm going to let you guys get out of here. This video's probably gone on way too long. So, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, fucking love you. Appreciate your support. Uh, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>